Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Desert Diamond Arena here in beautiful Glendale, Arizona. This is boxing, this is top rank. Presented by Hall of Fame boxing promoter, Mr. Bob Arum. Brought to you all evening long by AutoZone. Get in the zone by Bud Light, the official beer of celebrations. We are sanctioned by the Arizona State Boxing and Mixed Martial Arts Commission Executive Director Danny A. Vea, Chairman Scott B. Fletcher, your ringside physicians Dr. Ben Heller, Dr. Robin McDougall, and Dr. Ken Oda. Your timekeepers this evening, Keith Greenberg and Ricky Neal. Your judges for this championship fight, Lisa Giampa, Chris Wilson, and Zach Young. And the man in charge at the sound of the bell, Mr. Wes Melton. And now, to everyone here inside Desert Diamond Arena, and everyone watching on ESPN, this bout is scheduled for 12 rounds for the WBO Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Viva Mexico! This is boxing! This is top rank! And oh, baby! This is the main event! Introducing first, out of the Bud Light blue corner, he is the challenger. He weighed in at 129.8 pounds, wearing black with gold. His record, 31 victories with only one defeat. 23 of those victories coming by way of knockout. He is making his 11th world title appearance. He represented Mexico in the 2008 2012 Olympics. He is the former WBO featherweight champion of the world. He is the former WBC Junior Lightweight Champion of the World. He is from Nogales, Sonora, Mexico. He is Oscar Valdez. Introducing out of the red corner. He weighed in at 130 pounds, wearing red trunks with black trim. His record, 37 victories with only one defeat. 31 of those victories coming by way of knockout. In world title fights, he is 11-0 with nine knockouts. He is the former WBO Junior Featherweight Champion of the World. He is the former WBO Featherweight Champion of the World. He is the reigning, defending WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World from San Juan Zitatepec, Mexico. Emmanuel Vaca. Wes Melton, our referee, will bring them together one last time before they go at it. Okay, fighters, chief seconds. Fighters, chief seconds. Okay, fellas, this is for the WBO Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. We know the rules in the dressing room. These trunks are good, you can work in here. These trunks are good, you can work in here. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands. Touch them up, wait for the bell. Valdez, you see him on the right. He has said, I know what I've been through. I know that Navarrete hasn't done what I've done. I don't care about what he says, who he is. I know I'm winning this fight as the two legends look on. Navarrete has said, I want this kind of fight. One of the great ones, the ones that's spoken about forever. And I'm going to commit to it. I want a bloody Mexican style fight. Do we get it? Let's find out. Here they go for the title. Tim, you said right away, watch for pace. What kind of pace should we watch for early on? 
Well, I can just tell you this. You know, for Valdez, he needs to start. He can do two things. He can start off early by using his legs and athleticism to frustrate Navarrete and make him fall in and catch him with counters. Or he can press forward and take advantage of the poor footwork and fundamentals by Navarrete. I already see that awkwardness from Alcarate early on in the first exchange. He came in from the side door with a right hand. And Navarrete, he's a slow starter. It takes some time to kind of wind up his wind up his engine. There's a slip there. Motor. That was awkward on that exchange. Just a slip as Wes Melton will clean off the gloves of Oscar Valdez. So Valdez can push him back in spots. And for Navarrete, it's just be who he is. Be awkward, be clever. Oh, there it is. There it is. There's there that it is. lunging left hand from far away. Signature punch from Navarrete. Now on the inside, Valdez with a short right hand. And again, he's taking advantage of the high guard usage from Valdez. Pulling straight back with that high guard, and he was able to find a home for this uppercut. You said that high guard. Take advantage of it if you're Navarrete. Turn him into a punching bag. Go around the elbow and even get to the body against it. There it is again. He went around the body that time. Short left uppercut nearly coming with that left hook counter. That's a signature punch of Valdez but he was just off the mark. But you can see where the opportunity may exist. No High energy early on here at round one. No slow start for Navarrete. He's getting off nope. to a quicker start than I've seen him in the past. Right hand to the body from Valdez. Oh. Both men opening up. Valdez comes back with a left hand, goes with that left uppercut from mid-range this time. Good jab from Valdez. Missed with the right hand follow. No time to waste. High pressure fight. Oh, Two punch he heard him with that. He heard him with He's got Valdez hurt. Navarrete hurt Valdez here. Half a minute to go in round one. Good combination from Navarrete. You see no offense coming back from Valdez when he's in that high guard. Navarrete. Look at this for round number one. High guard killer, I told you. Forget, feel them out. It's get right to it and commit to the cause. Ten seconds, stop the bell. Big right in. Good opening round for wow. Emmanuel Navarrete. Wow. Hey, you can't fall into his trap, okay? Take it easy. He's gonna come to you. You gotta make him miss. You have great conditioning. Don't try to lunge first because he's gonna catch you with the uppercuts because he's longer than you. You gotta faint. When he throws, he's slow. You gotta counter him. This fight is gonna be won by counter punches. You gotta start the attack. It's gonna be Valdez right here getting caught out of position. You see him squat down right there in the right hand from Navarrete. Not only does he have a left hook, he has a right hand and an uppercut as well. But good shot. Navarrete just lets his hands fly. And when your opponent gets out of position, he follows up with his offense. He's dangerous with his assaults, especially getting his fighters out of position. If you throw enough punches, Something something's going to land. Yep, well, in that right. first round, Navarrete threw 73 punches to Valdez's 33 and landed nine power punches, including the right hand that was driven down and the left uppercut. Now you're seeing Valdez now coming forward, swinging wild with right hands to the body. But again, there's that left uppercut from far range again that gets him in. Forcing him out, getting out of position, no way of punching back, instant punching bag. He is so awkward, he is so unpredictable, and where that left hand comes from, it's just out of the natural range. It breaks the mold of what your opponent is expecting. In the jab of Navarrete, that's the problem right now for Valdez. He can't get inside. He's trying to find a way. But Navarrete, he kind of pushes with his jab. He leaves it out there for a second longer than usual. Right Most people bring the their body. jabs back, Tess. He doesn't. He leaves it out there. 
almost as a shield. Remember the six inch reach advantage for Navarrete. You always look at that body. You and I always make the same comment. You look at Navarrete's body, and it always just looks a little imperfect around the belly. This was even at 122 pounds, even at 126 pounds. I'm not, I'm not worried about exactly. that. Headweight champion of the world. <laughs> he, he looks he, like a bag of milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's three punch combination from Navarrete. Most of that was blocked by Valdez. Remember, in terms of combination punching, he's one of the best in the world of throwing four or more punches in combinations. Good jab, Good jab right there from Valdez. He needs to be consistent with that jab. He needs to be technically sound. And you heard from Eddie Reynoso as Bernardo Asuna was translating, saying the counter punch, the availability with all the offense that's coming your way with Navarrete, the counter punching will win this fight. You have to commit to it. Valdez now using his athleticism now, using his feet, trying to create offense for himself. He's playing defense right now. Cat and mouse. Play defense, let Navarrete Get a little full steam, let him get some confidence, and then he's going to be looking to counter him with shots. We're back against the ropes, but Valdez unable to pull the trigger with a right hand follow. Good adjustment There's a right, right now. hand to the body on the inside. Valdez trying to get that real estate on the inside. Warning behind the head. Navarrete fires back with the right hand. Tries to go with the left uppercut. Pulling back was Valdez out of range. Good exchange. Gets the crowd attention here at the end of round number two. Right hand one two from Navarrete. Tries to push it back with a jab. We got a good one. Oh, good left hand from Valdez. And Navarrete fires back with an uppercut. So far. It's living up to and exceeding expectations early on. You're doing okay. You gotta take the initiative, okay? You gotta work that left. You gotta faint. Now he, he felt your power. Take a deep breath. That's how I want to see you. Calm. And I want you to use your fingers. Don't let him take the initiative. Does he hit, does he hit hard? Nah. This left hook at the end of this round was something to see right here. Beautiful shot. He didn't turn that shot over. If he would have turned that shot over, I'm telling you right Second now, down. Navarrete probably would have been down, still Second down right now. You see, it's a slapping shot from Oscar Valdez. He needs to turn that punch over if he wants it to be effective. Round number three. As we begin this round, Navarrete has a 25 to 18 connect advantage. Came off the pace just a little bit in punches thrown in round number two. Valdez was eight of 41 in that last round. The punch that Navarrete's looking for, he's looking for the uppercut. That's the shot he's looking for, the left uppercut on Valdez. So happy that we are bringing you this main event completely commercial free. And with that access to the corner, Bernardo Asuna, I swear I heard them ask, does he hit hard? And the response was, nah. That's exactly what was asked of Emmanuel Navarrete by his cousin Pedro. And that was his answer, dismissing the power of Oscar Valdez. But it's early. And we know that the bravado of Navarrete may be, G, be just that. Well, ask Miguel Burchelt, who was the boogeyman, the undefeated fighter if Oscar Valdez hits hard because he had one of the knockouts of the year. Valdez being very crafty right now. Navarrete, yes, he's throwing, he's landing occasionally, but Valdez is being sneaky. Sneaking short behind. right hand on the inside and then a short left uppercut. And now he lunges at Valdez. It's so awkward and so unpredictable because you don't expect them from this space. There's another driving overhand right hand. And now they tie up on the inside, separated by West Melton. That's what he's great at, off rhythm punches. You don't see that. It's hard to train for this type of work from Navarrete. How would you ever find a sparring apartment that could replicate Emmanuel Navarrete? You can't. You can't. He misses with the right hand, and he's got an awkward right hand coming back at him. Short chopping left hook from Valdez. Right hand right back in his face from Navarrete. Just seems to me that Valdez is just looking for one punch in the left hook. He needs to put a little bit more to his arsenal. Navarrete has figured that out already. He's smarter than a lot of people give him credit for. He's a lot smarter. 
He was looking for that left uppercut, and then he changes and then he his he mind mid-stride. Yep. Now, he doesn't <laughs> land it, but we've seen him in the past absolutely brutalize opponents with that move. There he ducks underneath with the left hand to the body in the middle of the exchange. And how he did that was he threw the uppercut to bring the elbows inside, so that way he can reach around to get that left hook there. There's the left uppercut again. Time and again will lead with that. Valdez, that high guard that you detail, Timmy. Yeah, there's, there's some holes in the high guard. You can come around it, you can go down to the body, you can also split it and punch through it like that. What's very interesting, though, in recent years, as Valdez has become a more refined boxer puncher and with more defensive prowess under the tutelage of Eddie Reynoso, the trainer also of Canelo Alvarez, he is top 10 according to CompuBox in defensive efficiency. Now tonight, he's being hit. Navarrete, 35 punches landed, 23 of them already power punches. Oh, nice right hand by Valdez. Good stuff, good, good stuff. Enjuagate bien. Rinse your mouth. Agarra tu ritmo y como I need you to get into a rhythm, not his estás face. Defendiendo bien. Cuando te You're avientes, defending well, y lo pasas. but you need to duck and okay. get out of the way. He's going to start, start getting tired because he okay. comes in too heavy. Tranquilo. No pierdas la just calm no down. Comer Don't ese try to try to just rito, land that left hook one at a time. It's going to happen for you. Just watch out for that long right. Here's Navarrete on the inside. Views, nice little short shot, but wow. Look how he changed angles right there and still had the ability to be able to land and see this shot on the inside. Short right hand, there he is, steps back, switches stances, and shoots from the southpaw stance. Double uppercut from Navarrete. One, two. We heard the corner of Oscar Valdez, as Reynoso said, Navarrete will tire. You just have to calm down. It will happen for you. Let's check in with Mark Priegel and his scorecard to this point. Three rounds to none. Emmanuel Navarrete. Tim mentioned distance at the start of this fight. Navarrete with that long jab that he keeps out there has been controlling the distance the whole way through. And he's also landed those right hands from some crazy angles. Last thing I know, he took his great left hook, Timmy. He took his great left hook, but he's also made an adjustment himself, Navarrete. What he's doing is, look at his right hand. It's pinned to the side of his face every time he throws a punch. There's an off-balance left hand again from Navarrete. Wide sweeping right hand. Countering opportunities do exist. And there's a short right hand on the inside from Valdez. Partially blocked by Navarrete. He's aware of the left hook of Valdez. There it is again. That time he got just underneath. Remember, it was a left hook that floored Emmanuel Navarrete in his last fight in this arena, in this very ring, when he benefited from a long count. There's a right uppercut now. He spit out his mouthpiece against Liam Wilson, and for 27 seconds he was allowed to recover in a veteran move that claimed a title when he rallied back to win by TKO. Oscar Valdez is looking to close the distance on Navarrete. He's not even having a whole lot of success on the outside. It looks like he's trying to find a way to get it on the inside, and he wants to work the body of Navarrete. There he is, using his physical strength now. Holding up with that left hand, coming around with that right hand was Valdez. Merely missed with that left hook. That may be available, Timmy. We call that a frame. That's what it was, holding him up with one hand to be able to land the opposite. Valdez, that high guard, just trying to time that left hook again. You heard from Reynoso, the countering, the timing, it'll be there for you. It will be there. And he was trying to count it, counter it off the uppercut, so you know that's been a part of the game plan. When you see the uppercut, throw the left hook for Valdez. There's the uppercut right-hand combination. Ooh. A frequent combination from Navarrete. There it is again, that time a little fat with the right hand, but he was able to back up Valdez, who wasn't in position to return fire. But the variation, that's what's confusing Valdez. They're coming from everywhere, different angles, and the shots are heavy, Tess. These are not, these are not, you know, feather dusters. These are real hard shots coming from Navarrete. Now, you can see redness in the face of Valdez. Of course, 31 knockouts among his 37 wins for Navarrete. 
want you to pay attention to flow. You see Navarrete, he's real loose with his offense. Relax. Everything that, that Valdez throw is hard. That's you right. can see it coming. It's loaded. He loads up on his shots. As he did there with the left hand against the wiry, unpredictable Navarrete. End of four. Hey, don't rush it. There's no hurry. Take your time. You have them where you want them. You've got to keep working. And then I want you to go downstairs. Finish the down to the body. Give him some water. I like what you're doing. You just need that touch to the liver. That's all that's missing, all right? Hey, man, you got to close his exits. Let's go. World champion, Emmanuel Navarrete, three-division world champion, looking to defend here against Oscar Valdez. All Mexican clash. Two determined warriors. Round number four to this point, Navarrete with a 53 to 37 connect advantage. In that last round, he threw a fight high 81. And we told you about the four punch combinations. In that last round, he had three combinations that were four or more punches. He is one of the best in the world of putting his punches together. I like the adjustment that Valdez is doing now. Now he's committing fully to the body now. That's what he wants to do. He's trying to weaken Navarrete. Another right hand down to the body. Ooh. Good job from right there from Oscar Valdez. Just staying low, letting those punches fly over his head. Getting out of range from that attack as well, utilizing his footwork and now a little upper body movement. And then setting up a counter left hook for himself. So you don't always have to match volume with volume. You can outmaneuver volume. That's what you're seeing right now, Valdez do. Using some tactics. He's getting caught right there in that high guard. Oh. There's the volume punching. Some, something's gonna come through. Something's gonna get in, Tess. A good head work and the loose. Uh, and elusiveness right there from Valdez. And here's his follow-up attack. Just missed with the right hand. Left uppercut comes back into the face. Comes with a right uppercut. Creates more space. One, two from Navarrete. Oh! Good shot from Valdez. He sat on it and released it. Tries to come back with it in a short right hand. So here's a swing moment for Oscar Valdez, who's being a little more judicious and finding his spots. It's hard to break Valdez's psyche. He hasn't been having a good couple of rounds, and now he's still, he's still fighting back and trying to find a way to get himself into this fight. Whoa! Opens up with that left hook. Just partially blocked. His signature punch. Each man does it with the left hand. One, the out of range lunging uppercut. The other, a tight, fundamentally sound left hook. There's a four, five, six punch combination from Navarrete. Comes right back at Valdez. Highly competitive fifth round here. Neither guy wants to give an inch, a psychological edge at all, Tess. Navarrete trying to double up to the body. Oh, another left another hook. Another left hook from Valdez. Able to get around the probing shot. Down for Oscar Valdez, even with Navarrete hitting double digit connects and combination punching well again. How do you feel, Oscar? Okay. You caught him with some good shots. You got to use your legs as we see a cut now under Oscar's eye. You gotta keep using your legs. Come on. 
Salme rápido con las piernas, hijo. Y a, come up te quick with your legs. Cabeceando, wey, cabeceas, and you got to use tirar, your head movement. Tres, golpes, Last round was one of the best rounds for Oscar Valdez. Just finding a home for his left hook. Finally getting in position. Catching Navarrete out of position. There it is again. Nice right hand over the top as well. Saw the concern from Eddie Reynoso and the cut man, Carlos Barragán Jr., as there is now an abrasion that has opened up to a slight cut with swelling under that right eye of Oscar Valdez. That right eye that has been the target of that left uppercut. As we start round number six, let's check in with the card of Mark Kriegel. Four rounds to one. Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Navarrete. I thought Oscar came on strong in the fourth. I wouldn't have a problem if he gave that either way, but the fifth was definitely his with precision. I thought he defended himself much better. He was 11 of 23 for power punches in that fifth round, but you can see that abrasion and swelling under the right eye of Oscar Valdez. He did find a little bit of offense that was very effective in round number five, Timmy. See the athleticism right now in full effect from Oscar Valdez, and you see the technique faltering for Again, Navarrete, and as this fight continues and goes on and he starts to get fatigued, those openings are going to become more and more available for Oscar Valdez, who has the better technique. There's that Ooh. left hook again. He hurt him with that. Then he goes back with it, tried to follow it up with the right hand. Wide swinging overhand right, but instead Navarrete is able to get out of range and get to the ropes and force a break. So more success for Valdez. There's the left uppercut from Navarrete. Good shot from Navarrete. He continues to be landing that shot. It is a constant beat of the drum, that left uppercut. His trademark punch. You see him about to throw, look like he was going to throw a left hook, and then he snuck it underneath. Beautiful shot right there. See, it's not about swelling and discoloration with the abrasion under the right eye of Valdez. It's not about matching volume tests for Valdez. It's about accuracy. It's about being precise. That's what it's about. He can let Navarrete work, but he needs to choose his spots wisely when he lets his hands go. And that's what he's doing right now. Warning from Wes Melton. He's being clever. That's what he's being, sneaky, clever. Good shot to the body. That left hook to the body has been effective throughout the career of Oscar Valdez. And now inching forward just a little more as Valdez has a right hand to that wide flank. Left hook again from Valdez, finding more of a rhythm. And now an up jab. Nearly an elbow on the inside from Navarrete. This is good stuff right here. Oh, it's what excellent, a, what excellent, excellent high-level fight. What an adjustment from Oscar Valdez. Using these who adjusts will put themselves in position to win. Valdez more technically sound. Ooh. I'd say it's starting to get really good, but it's been like that since the opening bell. Such an intriguing matchup. Give him some water. Take a deep breath. Come on. Are you recovered? Are you okay? Something happened. I don't know what happened. You're, do you're moving backwards very well. Keep making a miss. And then just land that hook. Okay. It's been a ton of action. This entire fight from the opening bell. Both guys having their moments. It started off with Navarrete piling up points, hard shots, landing shots in between the guard of Oscar Valdez. But lately, of the last two rounds, Oscar Valdez has been coming on strong. He will not be detoured mentally. He is back into this fight right now. He is more precise with his shots, more accurate with his punches at the moment, and Navarrete has yet to answer. Well, those total punches just sum up who these guys are, right? You got one guy that's landing 28% in Valdez, more precise, but he's only thrown 202. Meanwhile, Navarrete's thrown 463 punches through six rounds.
He has landed 54 power punches. I just spoke with Pedro Navarrete, who trains Emmanuel, and I asked him, what did he tell you? And he kind of giggled at me and said that his hands hurting from hitting Valdez so hard. Yeah, I mean, that's typical <laughs> Navarrete, right? <laughs> well, he needs to find a softer, softer surface and needs to go down to that body and stop hitting him on the head. See, there's nothing more frustrating testing throwing punches, hoping they land and they don't land. The opponent making you miss. It tires you out, Tess. Mouthpiece out. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece is out. And, and the referee didn't see it. The fighter had the ball in the action in the break. Could have pointed it out. And Valdez will return to the corner. Of Eddie Reynoso to take care of that. Offensive low from Navarrete. Something is not right. There's something that's not right. It's either what not, what Van uh, Valdez is doing, or he might be hurt. I don't know. And then all of a sudden, he switches the gear and throws that combination. But to your point, he threw 95 punches in round number five. Right now, with a minute to go wow. in round number seven, he's thrown 33. Or this could just be typical Navarrete, managing his, en his energy. Valdez. Trying to dig to the body once he retreated him. Remember, there was a change in the camp of Navarrete because he was talking about wanting to have the gas tank filled towards the end to yeah. the strength and conditioning coach. Oh. Over the top of the right hand as Valdez misses with the left hook as Navarrete pulled back. Multi-punch combination again from Navarrete. Pulls out with a left ten hook. Seconds, seconds. Valdez tries to burrow his way to the inside. Unable to fire anything. Left hook Ooh. off the mark. Right Ooh. hand comes back from Navarrete Ooh. with a left uppercut as well. And they fight through the bell. Seven rounds in the books in this all-Mexican rivalry for the world title. Hey, the eighth round is coming. Hey, just spin it down. Don't get over anxious. Just keep working. I need you to move, work, and explode. Because of that. Put Vaseline on him. Navarrete right here taking advantage of the lows of the offense coming from Navarrete, oh, excuse me, from Valdez. You see the combinations right here falling up. You see the position he's in. He's out of position, can't really shoot any shots, and he finally stands up and throws the left hook. Tim, you mentioned the gear shifts of Navarrete. Yes. How there's ebbs and flows, how he can turn it on, he can turn it off, and then all of a sudden, here comes the tsunami wave of punches. He's a faucet. With about a minute, to go in that seventh round. We made the point of saying he's only thrown 33 punches to yes. this point. He finished that round with a fight high 99 <laughs> punches thrown and 21 landed. That's not what it is. He was just coasting along. Yes. And yet he finished with fight high 21 of 99. Well, well Tess, he can turn it on when round. he wants to. He can turn it on when he wants to fight. He can just turn it up. That's an unbelievable, unbelievable ability. There's a body shot from Oscar Valdez. Left hook from Valdez. See, Navarrete is about volume. You have Valdez. He's about sharp counters. Oh, oh like there's that. that right hand as Navarrete threw that punch and was off balance. We call that clean, effective punches. 
which is a scoring criteria. The most important of the scoring criteria. Clean and effective punching. It's what the game is about. Tried to chop down with that right hand. Just a grazing shot from Valdez. Been trying to hit that home run with the left hook a few times. Oh, nice shot right there. Nice setup. Double uppercut, then reach around the elbow to get the left hook to deliver by Navarrete. Good defense right there from Navarrete. Showing a little bit of his athleticism. Oh, there it is. You reach, I teach. Good shot coming back from Navarrete. I mean, this is it going back and forth. Neither guy looking, looking to give anyone an edge in this fight. And it's more about the mental. That's what it's more about. When you get hit with big shots, you, you try to get it back as soon as you can. Just to let the guy know, hey, <laughs> I'm here too, baby. Valdez closing in on him. Had him smothered for a moment. Now back out at range here. Final half minute of round number eight. See it turned into a tactical fight for Valdez. Left hand shot. was able to score there. Tactical and slower pace yep. would favor Oscar Valdez. Absolutely. Controlling the pace was a key element to this fight. Crowd starting to chant here as we come to the end of eight and head towards those championship rounds. Keep in mind, the back stretch of big fights. That is where Navarrete does his thing. Remember what he did to Isaac Dogbay. It was the brutal beatdown in the rematch. That's who he took the title from. Santissima he got in the 11th round back in 2020. Perhaps his finest performance was against Patufo Diaz down in Orlando in 2021. And then most recently, right here in this ring to win this title against a very game Liam Wilson he dismissed him in nine. And you look at the punch numbers of what he's put forth, his work rate goes up when we get to round nine through 12, as that is the point we have arrived in, the late knockouts for Navarrete. The difference is those guys gave in. They conceded, Tess, and he felt it. The difference here is Valdez, he's not going to concede. No, he's he going to be here all night long. He never does. Exactly. You are talking about That's a fighter the difference. who fought seven and a half rounds in a championship effort and won with a broken jaw. You got to beat the fight out of Valdez. You got to knock him out to stop him. So here we are. Round number nine. Navarrete with a 116 to 82 connect advantage according to CompuBox. Valdez more precision. He's landed 30% of his total punches. Navarrete landing 18%. Let's check in with Bernardo. I just spoke with Eddie Reynoso and I said, what did you ask him to come out and do? He's got to pressure. He's got to dig to the body. He does that. And he does. And it's a moment for Valdez. There's an overhand right as Navarrete fires back with an up jab and back to the center of the ring. Good action to open up round number nine. But he's missing, Tess. He's missing. Head Valdez. movement from Valdez. We told you the improvement of the defensive prowess in the recent years. He's going to need that down the stretch. You know what Navarrete intends to bring. Still searching for that left hook. He hurt his hand. It's the right hand that's hurt for Navarrete. He just shook his hand. Look at this. He's only throwing the left for the past couple moments. Now pawing with the right. Let's see if he throws. He tried to fix the glove with the right hand. Let's see if he throws a full right hand. Bernardo will be in that corner. Oh, he got hurt with that body, body shot. shot. Left hand sweeping across the body, comes up high. But we have yet to see Navarrete through that right hand, Timmy. It's hurt, but he has to fight, Tess. Doesn't matter, he's been here before. He's hurt his hands in previous fights, and he still found a way to win. And he says he wants to go to that dark place. Well, he's gonna have to go there tonight to beat Oscar Valdez because he is coming on strong on the back end of this fight. Going with the jab. Valdez seemingly sensing it. Still that continued swelling in the abrasion under the right eye. Navarrete only throwing out 
that stay away jab for right now. Right now, Valdez is doing what everybody didn't think he should do. He's pushing back Navarrete. That's what he's doing. He's pushing him back. And I knew he'll have opportunities to push him back because Navarrete's footwork is terrible. Terrible footwork. Poor footwork. So clearly something wrong with the right hand of Navarrete. Bernardo. Yeah, just to close out the point before the action started, Eddie told me, look, if we're losing this fight, I need Valdez to go out there and dig to the body because since the third round, he's missing the shots to the head. It'll be interesting to see how the judges scored things early on. How many of these rounds were banked by Navarrete as he clearly had the advantage in the early going, but right now, a turn of this championship fight in favor of Oscar Valdez, both with what he produced in this ninth round and now the circumstances with Navarrete. So limited with that right hand is Navarrete. Let's listen in, hear what they say. Hey, he's just waiting for you to press, and then he's going to counter you. Hey, don't take a step back. I know my hand hurts. Hey, we're never going to get this opportunity again. How, how do you see the fight? You gave up the Tim, let's round. show how people the Valdez punch from that last round and watch the feet as you see this replay. Watch the feet. Square. Right there. Yep. Stepped on him. Stepped on his foot right there. Tripped him up. So the reaction that everybody oohed and odd over it wasn't, partially it wasn't caused, by, right, yeah. caused by what happened oh, there absolutely. with the feet. So here we go. We've got high drama now, considering the right hand of Navarrete, the momentum swing for Valdez, as we are starting the 10th round. WBO Junior Lightweight World Championship on the line. Mexican Legacy Warrior Pride on the line in front of some of the greatest to ever do it sitting ringside. So Can there's a Navarrete use that right hand. So there's a risk for Valdez going down to the body. If he doesn't do it at the right distance, that uppercut could get in on him. Navarrete willing to throw combinations here to open up round 10, but not fully throttling that right hand. No, he just wants to fluster and be wilder about this. That's it. He wants to keep him occupied, keep his hands in his pocket. So he's just letting punches go, whether they land or not. Nothing's coming back from Valdez at this moment. And strangely, that's his best defense. Yes. But just look, if he doesn't pay attention, if he doesn't be disciplined with that right hand, that left hook is going to come real soon. Opening moments of this 10th round is a Navarrete round as the right eye is worsening for Valdez. Back and forth, these swings of drama. Valdez is looking, he's looking to just warm him up for that shot. He's looking, there, there it is. is. Right there hand is. over the top. That right eye is significantly there worse. It is again. Navarrete willing to exchange with that right hand. Gonna have to, has to bite down here as we head to the championship rounds. Tries to duck underneath with a body shot with the left. Bernardo. So Pedro Navarrete confirmed that it is the right hand that is injured. It's the knuckles for Navarrete, but he also said, keep an eye on that right eye of Valdez because he won't see the left coming. That's a very good point. We've been noticing it here in this 10th round. Much more significant swelling to that right eye of Valdez, who presses to the inside, sweeps across the body. Goes to the body, five punch combination, six punch combination, left hand included up top. Navarrete gets himself out of that corner. Minute to go here in round number 10. Valdez trying to come up and over with that left hook. Back out to range. One, two from Navarrete, doubles up the left hand. That's his sole healthy weapon. Look at the right eye of Valdez. It is badly damaged here. Over the top with the right hand. Looking to counter that left. That right eye is closing, it's closing. Timmy. It's closing. And in between rounds, we've been in Navarrete's corner, but I was hoping we can go over there in Valdez's corner. Is the inswell. Are they using the inswell 
on that eye. Look at this exchange. We got one guy with an injured right hand. Whoa. We got another guy with a closed eye. And yet we got a Mexican war breaking out. Oh, this is great stuff. Come on, Come now. on, baby. Give it to us. Everything it's all about. Everything it's supposed to be and still championship rounds to go. Give me that water. How do you feel? I'm good. Take a deep breath. Come on. Breathe. Hey, you landed some shots, but he also connected you. I need you to find your timing. You need to faint and box. And then you're going to land on your left hook. Timing is key here. Hey, I need you to use your head. I need you to return your hands to a defensive position. Fully greasing up that right eye and sending him out. A two-division world champion against a three-division world champion fellow countryman. Mark Kriegel, your scorecard. Six rounds to four, 96-94. Navarrete. Navarrete wanted to go to that place. He's there now, fellas. Here we go. That last round, look at the punches. Navarrete was 32 of 128. Valdez landed 23 of 51. That was a classic round. Ooh. Big right hand, sweeping with the left hook, nearly went through the ropes, and Wes Melton nearly got hit, as he did a year ago in a viral clip. The war is about to break out. Oh, it's been there. Oh, no. It it's about to heat up even more these last couple of rounds. The eye is almost fully shut of Oscar Valdez. The right hand of Emmanuel Navarrete has been injured and hurt for over seven minutes to this point. And yet, it's pedal oh. to the metal, and it's a right hand from Valdez. And they're swinging away in the center of the ring. Look at the damage to the right side of the face of Valdez. And yet he's somehow finding moments. Halfway through round 11. Oh. There's the left hand coming from range. Off balance from Navarrete, his signature punch. Another left hand targeting that damaged eye. Sweeping right hand from Valdez. Now, but they just walking straight through it like it was nothing. Tess, the most interesting thing about Navarrete fights is, is, is his face. He takes punches, he gets hit flush, but you don't see the wear and tear like you see on Valdez's face, on Navarrete. Every fight he's in a war, but you can't even tell. Good shot, this is a good round for Navarrete right here. Great round for him. They hear the clap. Short left uppercut on the inside. Big round for Navarrete. Oh. They're going to have three minutes to decide it. Oh my a goodness. thriller in the desert. Look at that eye. The old Mexican clash. Barrera's on his feet. You gotta do something to win. You gotta go and win this fight. 
And you gotta show your guts on the other side. Hey, this is what you wanted. You gotta prove yourself. Don't leave anything in the tank. This is all about pressuring him. He's got nothing for you. Hey, you already took everything he had. Now give it to him. Give it back to him. Don't leave anything in the tank was just spoken to a guy that has thrown 937 punches. Show your guts was spoken to a guy who has shown them each and every time. Let's decide it right here. Coming off a big Navarrete round with the championship on the line. 12th and final round. Test that right eye is closed. Oh, it's closed. It's closed. It Doctor didn't even come up. Doctor didn't even come up at all to check that eye. Punches landed 182 to 127 edge for Navarrete. Oh, good shots. Both men landing there. It was a right hand from Navarrete and return fire right hand from Valdez. The right side of the face of Valdez shows you so much of what may reveal itself on the scorecard. Middle rounds and towards later rounds, Valdez had some big, big moments. Early rounds were Navarrete. And later rounds could be a Navarrete finish. And keep in mind, with a damaged right hand, that was a push and a slip. And having to pick himself off the canvas late in this fight, brutal fight, fought at a high pace, takes a lot out of you. The onslaught from Navarrete as he always does. He just brings more and more and more. Right hand from Valdez tried to sneak in. Navarrete seemingly unaffected, slipped on the signage, the wet signage in the middle of the ring. Oh my goodness. This crowd cannot get enough. Over 10,000 selling out the configuration here. Everybody came early wanting to get in to see the Mexican clash. The Mexican legends ringside. Julio Cesar Chavez, Barrera, Morales. And it's fitting to perform like this in front of those eyes. Here come Valdez. <laughs> Better have urgency here. Wide sweeping right hand, four punch combination from Navarrete. Ooh. Awkward left hand sends Valdez back. And now on the attack, headshots from Navarrete. Each man said they wanted this kind of a fight. The kind of fight that takes you to the dark places. The kind of fight Navarrete said all the great Mexican legends have. There's the traditional left uppercut that he puts forth again. And that right eye is in bad, bad shape. Left hand from Valdez. Final ticks of the clock. Right hand combination from Valdez. Got to find something here. He's going for it. Navarrete fires back. How about it? Standing ovation for these two great champions. Timmy, before we even think about the scorecards, I'm gonna put it out there right now. All week long, Barrera and Morales were part of this promotion. We're celebrating these two fighters. That feels like fight one of a trilogy to me. <laughs> Absolutely. That, we just saw. <laughs> that feels like fight one of what will be this generation's great say it again. all Mexican trilogy. Look at that right eye. Top rank boxing on ESPN is presented by AutoZone. Get in the zone. They were in the zone. Navarrete threw well over 1,000 punches. Valdez landed 114 power punches. When we come back, we will hear from the judges with a crowd still on their feet with gratitude. 
If you're like I was, you're tired. Timmy, that was just Epic. an amazing, just an amazing fight. Take us through what your eyes saw, Tim Bradley. Well, early on, Navarrete got off to an early start. You know, usually he starts off slow, but he came out. He had intentions on laying leather on Oscar Valdez. You know, catch him with shots like that from odd angles. That's the tricky part of Navarrete. You can't train for his awkwardness. You can't train for his elusive hard punches or his movement, you know, and timing. But Oscar Valdez, I would say, came on midway. He started finding his mark. He started changing his game plan up, going down to the body of Navarrete, really focusing and keying in on it, onto his body to be able to set some kill shots up top. But again, Navarrete finishing strong, although he had a hurt hand. Finney found a way within him to summon the strength to finish strong on the back end of this fight. And I believe he got this victory tonight. But a fantastic show of heart, will, and determination by both men tonight. And how champions finish a fight often tells you all you need to know. How Navarrete finished that 12th round as you look at his dynamic output on CompuBox and a heck of an effort from Valdez. He landed 34 punches, all power punches in the 12th round. That is the most. 34 landed in the 12th round is the most ever by an Oscar Valdez opponent who came into the ring top 10 in the world in defensive efficiency. Navarrete was 34 of 101 punches thrown in that 12th round. Mark Kriegel, what is your scorecard read? 116, 112, eight rounds to four. Emmanuel Navarrete, one guy didn't have a right hand, one guy didn't have a right eye. The one thing we never counted on was Emmanuel Navarrete dominating the distance and ultimately the fight with a jab of all things. He is a great fighter. In front of all time great Mexican Warriors ringside, he fought like one. On a day 41 years ago today when the world lost one of the great Mexican fighters, Salvador Sanchez, Emmanuel Navarrete and Oscar Valdez put forth that level of performance. Okay, let's determine it. Let's hear from the judges. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside Desert Diamond Arena, after 12 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Zachary Young scores the bout 116-112. Chris Wilson scores it 118-110. And Lisa Giampa scores it 119-109. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. And still, WBO Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Emmanuel Vaquero Navarrete! Emmanuel Navarrete, a unanimous decision winner to retain his world championship in an absolute classic where the